Oliver Twist, Chapter 21 A Full Confession After making a report at the police station, Harry went to visit Mr. Brownlow. Mrs. Bedwin brought him into the study. Harry quickly introduced himself. Mr. Brownlow, I know this may come as a surprise, Harry said, but I've come with a message from Oliver Twist. Oliver? Mr. Brownlow rose quickly from his chair. You know Oliver? Where is he? Don't worry, Harry said. He's safe, at least for the time being. He was grabbed in the street by those bandits while running to the bookstore for you. A few days later, a man named Bill Sykes forced him to break into my mother's home. Our dogs hurt the intruders. Oliver was caught by Sykes, but Sykes escaped. My mother kept Oliver at her house during his recovery. We have grown very fond of the boy. He told us his sad story, including your kindness toward him. We want to help any way we can. Mr. Brownlow sighed. I am so relieved to hear that he is in safe hands. I was worried that he was in danger. So, you know all about Fagin, Sykes and the young thieves? Harry asked. No, Mr. Brownlow replied. But I know of... But I know of other dangers that threaten Oliver. I've been condu conducting my own investigations since he left. I already had my suspicions, but have since learned some very important details about our Oliver. My word, Harry exclaimed. May I ask what you have learned? I'm certain Oliver would want to hear all. I need to confirm a few more details before I say anything, Mr. Brownlow replied. I hope you understand. Harry nodded that he understood. I really must be going, Harry said. My mother and Rose will be expecting me. Mr. Brownlow stood up to shake the young man's hand. I cannot thank you enough for coming to see me, the old gentleman said. Please give my love to Oliver. Let him know that I will come to see him very soon. Of course I will, said Harry. He will be happy to hear you didn't think him a thief. Never, Mr. Brownlow exclaimed. Harry Maylie was not gone ten minutes when there was another knock at Mr. Brownlow's door. This time, however, a young woman was admitted to his study. Nancy was very nervous. She kept her shawl wrapped tightly around her shoulders. She refused to sit down. I can't stay, she said quickly. I've only come to warn you about Oliver. Whatever do you mean? Mr. Brownlow said. I've just had word that he is safe. For now, she said, but there are plans to grab him again. How do you know all this? Brownlow asked. Because I'm the one who nabbed him last time, Nancy blurted out. I grabbed him while he was running to the bookstore. Please don't look at me like that, she exclaimed. I know that I've done wrong. I've lived a very bad life. I've been a thief since I was little. I know what it's like to live on the streets and don't want that for Oliver. Nancy's eye, eyes filled with tears. Come with me to the police, Mr. Brownlow said. You could lead them to Fagin and his thieves. No, Nancy exclaimed. I won't go to the police, never. I don't care what happens to me, or to Fagin for that matter. But there's, other, there's one person that I must protect. If I go to the police, they will want information about him. I won't do anything to hurt him. We can protect you if that's what you're worried about, Mr. Brownlow said. He was very concerned about this woman. He knew she was scared and that she was doing a very brave thing. It's never too late for, uh, to ask for forgiveness, he said. No, Nancy chuckled despite her tears. It's too late for me. Then, what are we to do? Brownlow asked. They know where Oliver is staying, she said. There's a strange man walking, working with them. He says that he knows the family well. He is determined to stop Oliver, but I don't know why. They plan to break into the house in the next day or so and grab Oliver. Nancy started to cry again. Oh, Mr. Brownlow, I worry that they might do. I worry what they might do when they have him again. The strange man has me very worried. Do you know this man's name? Brownlow asked. His voice was very calm. He calls, his, he calls himself Monks, but I don't know if that's his real name. He always wears a large hat and a coat buttoned to his neck. I suspect that he's hiding something. 
Can you tell me anything else about him? Brownlow asked. Well, Nancy said slowly, she was thinking very carefully. He has a red scar, a burn maybe, on his left cheek. Aha! Brownlow exclaimed, just as I thought. I'm sorry, sir, Nancy said. Do you know him? Alice, Mr. Brownlow said, I know the man well. Nancy looked very confused. It was a strange coincidence that Mr. Brownlow would know this man Monks. For the first time, Nancy wondered if there was something different about Oliver Twist. Will you be all right getting home? Mr. Brownlow asked. I would be happy to lend you my carriage. She shook her head. There's no need, she said. I'm very comfortable in the streets at night. It's where I've spent much of my life. Nancy said a quick goodbye, then hurried out the front door. Mr. Brownlow watched her leave. He wished there was something more he could do to help her. If only he had looked out for his front window to watch her walk down the street, he might have noticed a man dressed in a large hat and full coat following, following her. If only Mr. Brownlow had known what was about to happen.